You might be familiar with IX systems as the developers of TrueNAS, but they also sell servers, from GPU servers for machine learning to multi-node servers with eight CPUs. But they also have their mini lineup of NAS devices for offices and small businesses. And they actually sent over one of these mini devices for me to check out today, but <clears throat> I think the term mini might be a bit relative in this instance. Now, really quick, I'd like to point out that this video doesn't need a sponsor, thanks to my awesome raid members. Not only do they help support the channel, but they also get cool perks like early access to videos, behind the scenes content, extended edits, like for example with my Home Lab series, and much more. So if you're interested in helping support the Hardware Haven channel and getting some cool perks in the meantime, head on down to the description and get signed up as a raid member today for as little as a dollar. All right, that's it, back to the video. All right, so what is this not so mini server? Oh gosh, it's so heavy. I'm not holding that anymore. This is the TrueNAS Mini R from iX Systems, a 12 bay rack mountable network attached storage server. Now, before we get too far into this, I'd like to point out that this server costs nearly $2,000 without any hard drives. And I know some of you are already freaking out thinking, oh my gosh, Hardware Haven, you sell out. Why would you cover such a thing? Uh, but the truth is this probably isn't for you. It's not even really for me. I can't, I can't afford a $2,000 NAS. Realistically, this NAS is geared more towards offices and small businesses where that cost might actually make a lot more sense, but more on that a little bit later. I thought this would be a fun chance to take a look at some hardware that realistically I'm probably never going to be able to buy, but also isn't just completely outlandish and might actually make sense for some of you that either work at or run a small business. I also have plans to use this for another video where I'm going to test out a few different TrueNAS configurations and more of a real world test setup to kind of see what might make the most sense for you when setting up your TrueNAS server. If that sounds interesting, make sure to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss it. Now, as with any time a company sends me a product like this, no money exchanged hands and I get to say whatever I want about it. And you can trust me as much as you want. Enough talking though, let's go ahead and take a look at this server. On the front, there's a lockable cover and dust filter, and then right behind that are the 12 hot swappable SATA drive bays. These can obviously be populated with hard drives or SATA SSDs, and iX Systems sent over 8 Western Digital Red Plus 10TB hard drives and 4 2TB SATA SSDs. On the front you also get the power and reset buttons, as well as some indicator LEDs. All pretty standard stuff. Inside the case, well, things are somewhat empty. Now, I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure this is just a rebranded Supermicro chassis, which would have had a much larger motherboard and such. That's not really a bad thing though, but there is just a lot of empty space. Inside the Mini R, you get this cute little Supermicro ITX motherboard, which is actually pretty neat. It features an integrated Intel Atom C3758 CPU, which has eight cores and a base and boost clock of 2.2 gigahertz, as well as a 25 watt TDP, hence the passive cooling. The TrueNAS Mini R starts at 32 gigs of RAM, but my configuration came with 64. There's also a 250 gigabyte NVMe SSD, which for me came pre-installed with TrueNAS Core, although you can order this server with TrueNAS Scale. On the back of the motherboard, there are two 10 gigabit RJ45 ports, as well as an IPMI management port. There are also two USB 2.0 ports, a VGA port, and a USB 3 port via an extension from an internal port on the motherboard. The motherboard also has a PCIe Gen 3x4 slot, which in my system came pre-populated with a dual 10 gigabit SFP Plus card. There are four SATA ports, but also two mini SAS connectors providing the other eight SATA ports. All of these are connected to the backplane via mini SAS cables. This motherboard is actually really cool, and I was kind of hoping that since it's about six or seven years old now, I might be able to find some good deals on eBay or something, but sadly that's not the case. The entire system is powered by a single 350 watt 80 plus gold power supply, and it's kind of a bummer that this doesn't include redundant power supplies, but I guess that's just a feature that's reserved for the higher end products. After plugging it in and turning it on, it immediately booted into TrueNAS Core, and everything just worked. I started by setting up two pools, one with just SSDs with two mirrored VDEVs, and then the other with all of the hard drives set up in RAID Z2. Now there's actually this really cool feature when you buy an iX Systems NAS, where it shows the layout of all of the hard drives and tells you which one's which, and also tells you what VDEV and pool they belong to, which is really helpful when you need to replace drives, or in my case, just tinker around with things. 
Now, sadly, one feature was missing, which is the identify drive feature. When I clicked this, I was expecting to see the LEDs on that drive caddy flash to tell you which drive you're looking for, but I guess that feature is only reserved for the higher end NAS models. However, with only 12 drives and the layout feature, I don't think you're really going to struggle that hard to find a drive, so not really that big of a deal. Performance when doing sequential reads and writes was really good over a 10 gig connection. When reading large files off the NAS, I was getting 1.12 gigabytes per second or so, but it was a little bit slower when doing writes. However, I think that might have been just due to the nature of write speeds with the SATA SSDs. A bit later on, I tried striping the SSDs, and the write speeds got much better after that. Now, I didn't do a ton of crazy benchmarking with IOPS and random reads and writes, partly because this is just sort of an overview, but also because I'd like to cover a little bit more of that in my follow-up video where I try out different TrueNAS configurations. I did get a little bit of real-world experience though doing some video editing off of this, and both on the flash storage and the hard drives, I was getting really snappy performance just editing some 4K footage. Normally, editing off my own TrueNAS server, which has four 10TB hard drives, isn't bad or anything, but I did start to get a little jealous. I think I might have to do an upgrade soon, maybe add some flash storage. Without any drives, the entire system drew around 44 watts from the wall at idle, and with all 12 drives populated, it drew around 122 watts. Now, I would have liked to have seen this draw a little bit less than 44 watts at idle, but I guess a lot of that's going to be attributed to the 10 gig card, the backplane, and the system fans. Now, speaking of the fans, I should talk about noise. The TrueNAS Mini R is marketed as having a quiet design, more suitable for offices rather than data centers. While it is quieter than just about any other enterprise-type server I've heard, it was very much noticeable sitting in my small office. I didn't do a ton of digging, but I didn't find any fan controls or anything in the BIOS. It's not a huge deal breaker though, as this is going to be rack mounted, so most likely it's going to be in an IT closet or something, and not sitting right next to someone's desk. Although TrueNAS Core was running great, I'm a little bit more familiar with TrueNAS Scale, so I decided to swap out the boot drive and give TrueNAS Scale a shot. Now one really cool thing I noticed was that it immediately realized this was a TrueNAS Mini R, and had all of the same features like the cool layout and such. However, I did run into some performance issues. When doing the exact same file transfers I did earlier, I was getting really good write speeds, but read speeds were always limited to around 700 megabytes per second or so. This was even the case when I knew the files I was reading should be cached in memory. I really have no idea what was causing this, because even using my own TrueNAS scale system with my desktop, I was able to get around 1.1 gigabytes per second. To make sure it wasn't an issue with my desktop, I also tried out the Minis Forum MS01, which has integrated SFP plus NIX, and I saw the exact same thing there. I'm not really sure what caused that, I have been talking with IX Systems to see if we can figure it out, and if we do figure out what it was, I'll make sure to post it in a pinned comment or something. Now earlier I did mention that this has an IPMI port, which works as expected. It's really easy to set up in the BIOS, and within a few minutes, I was able to control the system even when it was off, so you can power it on, power it off, and even have full KVM access, which is a really handy feature to have if this is, you know, for example, tucked away in an IT closet somewhere. While it is great to see this system just work as expected, I wanted to tinker a bit with it. After all, these mini R systems might actually be affordable for you and me when they're on the used market in a few years, and I wanted to see if I could use this system outside of its original use case. The first thing that caught my attention was the PCIe slot. The first idea that popped into my head was to populate this with an HBA so that you could add an external JBOD. Now that's actually a feature that exists on some of the higher end TrueNAS systems, but it's not technically supported or a feature on the mini system. But I do have an LSI HBA and I figured I might toss it in to give it a shot. Now sadly that card was way too long and the back of it ran into the mini SAS ports, so I decided to just toss in a small SATA controller just to kind of prove a point. I plugged into SATA SSDs and actually was able to use a SATA power plug off the power supply, and the system booted and TrueNAS recognized them with no issues. So not exactly what I intended, but you could technically add more drives internally or through a JBOD by using that PCIe slot. I actually asked IX Systems what their thoughts were on this and if this would void warranty or support. And while they said it might be weird on a support call to see more than 12 drives in the NAS, this technically wouldn't void your warranty or support. They just obviously wouldn't cover the external JBOD and drives. In the spirit of tinkering with things, I decided to give Proxmox a try. While the Atom CPU clocked at 2.2 GHz isn't anything crazy, it does have 8 cores and supports virtualization. I figured it would be weird to have a system that says TrueNAS on the front, 
and not install TrueNAS. So I set up a VM running TrueNAS Core and passed through the SATA controllers with PCIe pass-through. And that surprisingly worked without any issues. I tried to pass through the SFP Plus card, but I didn't get quite as lucky there. Regardless of what I tried, I kept getting this VFIO PCIe error with the message unable to change power state. I didn't do a ton of digging, but I did try a few things with no luck, so I eventually just decided to set up a virtual Tingig NIC, and that worked just fine with just a little bit of overhead. When doing the same sequential reads and writes, I was getting performance that was just a little bit slower than running at bare metal. Read speeds were actually better than when I installed TrueNAS Scale, so that's something. Now, I don't think you would use a system like this for VDI, but I also set up a Debian virtual machine, which was a little sluggish, likely due to the 2.2 GHz CPU and lack of any sort of graphics acceleration. And just for the absolute heck of it, I set up a plain old vanilla Minecraft server, which surprisingly ran pretty well. Now, to be fair, I was by myself, but still, I've seen much worse, especially when not running a more optimized server like Paper, for example. Now, obviously, this doesn't make sense unless you run this in your office and maybe want to have a nice little communal office Minecraft server. But realistically, Minecraft servers and VDI aren't going to be what people use the server for when it comes to virtualization. But it's still cool that this 8-core Atom CPU can still handle some light virtualization tasks, although it probably makes more sense to just run those within TrueNAS scale rather than with Proxmox. Now I know a lot of you still aren't over the price tag, and I get it, but like I said earlier, this system isn't for you, or for me although I'm a little bit sad I have to send it back. Obviously, a DIY solution is going to be significantly cheaper, especially if you take advantage of used components. I actually hopped on eBay and just within a few minutes threw together some parts to see what it would look like to build a system that's somewhat comparable in terms of features. With listings that were readily available, I grabbed a KB Lake Xeon as well as a Supermicro motherboard and 64 gigs of RAM. I also threw in a 750 watt power supply, an SSD for the boot drive, and a used Fractal Define 7XL. I also grabbed an LSI SAS HBA and cables, all for less than $600. I also could have tossed in a 10 gigabit NIC for around $40 or so, and if I even wanted to go with a rack mountable chassis, I could have picked up this ATX Supermicro case and spent pretty much the exact same amount of money. Now this parts list probably isn't the most optimized thing ever, I just threw it together in a few minutes, but it would only cost around a third of what the TrueNAS Mini R costs, while still having pretty much all of the same features. Now for me, and I imagine a lot of you, going that route would actually make a lot more sense. But for a business, that might not be the case. All of the time that it takes to research those parts, order them, assemble them, troubleshoot problems, that's all time that someone's getting paid. And it's not just the person or team that's having to get this NAS set up, it's also the people that actually need that NAS to have the data they need to work on. If you, for example, have a team of video editors that can't edit for a day because the NAS went down, that's a lot of downtime. And in the business world, downtime can cost a lot of money. For a business, having something that's reliable and just works might be worth that extra cash. While all of the parts in the TrueNAS Mini R are technically just off-the-shelf components, IX Systems takes time to verify all of the hardware and make sure that it works well together and that users won't run into weird bugs down the road, hopefully. You also get one year of warranty and support, but you can also add on an extended warranty. Now there are other solutions from brands like Synology, for example, that cost pretty much the same if not more, but with those you're stuck with whatever software they have. With a system like the TrueNAS Mini R, you get to use TrueNAS, which is open source and awesome, so it really just depends sort of on what your needs are and what makes the most sense. And I want to be clear that I'm not saying any of this just to market their product. I'm not getting paid, and I don't get to keep this system. I do actually think that for the right customer, this could be a good product. I'm actually currently talking with my former employer about getting one of these, because I think it makes a lot of sense for them. They have a decent sized team of content creators and are really in need of an upgrade to their NAS solution, but all they really need is something that's simple and reliable. They also really don't have an IT department, so having something with a warranty and support is really helpful. But I should mention one thing about support. There's kind of a bummer there. While the TrueNAS Mini R does come with at least one year of warranty and support, that support is only through the web portal and email, and it only covers the hardware and software. If you want phone support and help getting things set up within your infrastructure, you need to use their bronze plan, I believe, which is only available if you also purchase some of their enterprise hardware. I know they don't have a huge team, but it would be really nice if these systems, especially the TrueNAS Mini R, came with a little bit more support for small teams, where I think this might make a lot of sense. 
Still, I think something like the TrueNAS Mini R is a great option if you want a reliable system that just works, but you want to use TrueNAS and not be stuck with something like DSM from Synology. Also, by buying one of these systems, you're helping to fund the development of TrueNAS, which I love, so bonus. All in all, this seems to be like a pretty decent mid-range option that's between home users and the crazy ridiculous enterprise stuff. And it also lets you use TrueNAS, which is awesome and open source, and who doesn't love that? If you work at or own a small business, or just have a good amount of money and you think one of these might be a good option for you, I'll make sure to have links down in the description below. I had a lot of fun getting to check out this system and I hope you had a good time as well, but I think that's about it for this one. So as always, thank you guys so much for watching. Stay curious and I can't wait to see you the next one. Hope that wasn't important.